because the U.S. empire is definitely declining, and and you know it's something that I don't celebrate. Uh, but I spend a lot of time traveling outside the United States, and anybody who does has no illusions about that. You know, you, you can't go to Europe or China and get on a train and not realize the U.S. empire is declining. Just something as simple as that. Because in both those places, you can go between any two places by train for a reasonable cost, which allows all kinds of things to happen in the society that we can't do here. It's much more green and efficient, uh, uses less energy, um, it's, it's comfortable, you know, it's, uh, it, it allows commerce to happen in remote cities with much more ease, you know. Getting here, getting to Canton, New York from New York was a pain in the neck today. Yep. I had to fly to Ottawa and then be driven an hour and a half. If this was China or Germany, I would have just taken a train and changed in, you know, Utica or someplace. Mm -hmm. And I would have been here, you know, and it would have been a very smooth, I probably would have had breakfast on the train, yep. and it probably would have been incredibly comfortable and clean, and, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the thing about the American empire is most Americans don't realize that it's ending, and that's what's so scary, because if you don't realize that your empire is threatened, then you don't take any steps to slow down the decline. And you listen to somebody like Santorum or even Romney, and they just, you know, they just pander to the ignorance of the voters that support them by acting as if basically all we have to do is be tough and the rest of the world is going to go back to being subservient to us, which is just a crazy idea. Because in fact, in most of the world, they're working harder than we do. That's the single biggest reason that we are in decline. You go to China, those people are not just a bunch of communists who are bending the rules, they work harder than we do. And even in a lot of European countries, Believe it or not, they work harder than we do. Americans have gotten fat, happy, and lazy. And the happy part is the part that's going to go away the fastest, in my opinion, because we're being outcompeted by countries around the world that just understand more than we do what's necessary to, to, to succeed in a modern economy. You know? And you can easily look at this from the standpoint of education, too. The fact that you know, engineering and science and math is just like really kind of uncool in American ed ed education when... It's the key to economic success in every other country. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm look, I believe in the liberal arts, and what St. Lawrence represents is something that I believe in. I went to a liberal arts college, and learning to think matters. Uh, and I think we, we, we do have some strength in that. But unless we also recognize that really everybody needs to learn about computer programming, for example, mm -hmm. which increasingly in other countries they're starting to recognize, um, um, the jobs just aren't going to be here. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, optimistic about the U.S.'s long-term uh, prognosis. I was just in Shanghai three weeks ago, and I rode a maglev train to the airport in seven minutes, which would have been a 45-minute drive. And it's not even new. It's been there for three years. And there's not a single maglev train in any city in the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, you can find examples like that. The world's leading genomics analysis center is in Shenzhen. A lot of American hospitals send their genomes, the genomic genetic material, to China to be analyzed now. You know, it's like in one field after another, they're getting ahead of us because they take it more seriously than we do, and they fund things that we don't fund. We have a lot of great capabilities here, and I don't think, you know, I wouldn't say we're not smart about a lot of things. We have tremendous innovation here. There's a lot of medical technology. There's a lot of internet technology that's wonderful. There's a lot of manufacturing technology that's wonderful. But we don't, in general, view the challenges to our country seriously enough. And if we did, the number one reform we would make would be in education. And the fact that instead we defund education at the moment in the US because we have no money for state and local government mm -hmm. is like proof of the decline. So there you go.